welcome back everybody welcome back to homestead heart and today or this evening rather i am releasing a follow-up video to the video that i did today because there were some things that i forgot to mention and that video was all about canning canning q canning q a okay now I forgot some things to mention and I have to mention it because these things apply to not just um, you all, but even to people in our family, okay? This applies to people in our family and even friends that we have. Now, we have family members that are close to us that have had strokes that are on fixed incomes and literally live off of a small amount of money every single month. And I'm gonna do a video this week entitled, Who Are You Canning For? Tamu, you are soaked and where you been? Hey, buddy. Hey, how you? big old bear baby so so you getting it all over my foot <laughs> so we have family members that are struggling from one in one area or another but like I said in a later video we're gonna talk about who are you canning for okay that's gonna be a tough video to do and it's probably going to be tough for you to watch because you're going to have to think about some things okay but for right now i want to talk about something that i forgot to mention in that canon q a because although although we don't want to stand in any lines okay but we don't want our our loved ones and our friends to do it either. And some of them might not be able to get up and run to a store. You know, I remember during Katrina, there were people in wheelchairs who could not get out and they were dependent upon a uh, family. And some of them who didn't have family were dependent upon neighbors and friends to help to save and get them out, all right? So if you have family members that you, you know can't get up and say, hey, let's go run and get some jars, or hey, hey, Grizzly, or hey, let's get up and do a lot of canning. You know, if you have family members and friends like that, don't forget about them, okay? Help them. Especially our, our look, help them. If you can can for them, can for them. If you can can for them, can for them. If you can't can because you can't find jars and lids, well, go to the store for them. When you go to the store, well, pick up a, 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 a extra bag of beans, a dollar and what, 50 cent for a one pound bag. Pick up an extra bag of beans and an extra bag of rice. Remember them. Don't forget about them because everybody can't do like we're doing. And I honestly, I honestly was going to talk about this first, but I didn't write it down because I have a mother. Yeah. I have a mother. My mother-in-law had a stroke. We have to remember the people who can't. Okay. We have to remember the people who can't can and do like we do. We have to remember them. Well, if they can't can, well, I could send them stuff. I can it and I could send it to them, right? Or because we're in a different state, when my mom, if she goes shopping or somebody else, send them money or order things for them online, if you can. The key word is do what you can. All right, do what you can. Everybody is different. 
Everybody's pockets are different. Everybody's circumstances are different. Help where you can, okay? I can't help everybody. <laughs> I can't help everybody. But I can help everybody. And the way I can help everybody is by sharing this information with you. But when it comes to family members that are close, do what you can to help them. Don't forget about them, okay? Don't forget about your elders, okay? Think about your neighbors who may be elderly or disabled or could just be a family struggling, right? It could just be a family struggling. It just could be a family, mom and dad and children or mom and children. They could just be struggling. And if you have it in your budget and you can squeeze in a couple of cans of ravioli, it don't matter. Ramen, noodles, that's not nutritious. Look, in an emergency situation when there, where there is nothing to eat and we are talking about people who are not able to put food away, do you think they would turn down some ramen noodles? I know they wouldn't. If you starving, you wouldn't either. <laughs> you wouldn't, e I wouldn't either. If I ain't got no food and I ain't ate in a few days and somebody said I ain't got but a pack of ramen noodles, you're gonna be like, oh, I don't eat that. That's not healthy. <laughs> no, remember them, okay? Right now, well, not right now, but earlier today, Hurricane Laura made landfall in Louisiana. We have family and friends in Louisiana. Yeah, and a lot of our YouTube family in Louisiana. And we remembered them in our prayers. And yeah, we were checking on our folks. You know, I think um, a lot of our family is still without power. Don't know when it's going to be back on. And although they have food and their homes weren't damaged, many of their homes were all electric. So they still can't cook. The refrigerator is off, the stove is off. They still can't cook. But I bet if they had a can of ravioli, they can open their can and who cares if it ain't hot? At least you got something to eat. Knowing my mom, she had already fixed something to eat. She was out, she straight. <laughs> Knowing my mama, she already had some in the refrigerator. She can just go, I'm all right. <laughs> you know? But anyway, I just wanted to do this follow up because I started thinking about my cousin who had a stroke, my mother in law, my mom. You know, I just started thinking about all of the people in our family and even our friends that can't can because remember I did a video where I talked about the family members that you know I tried to help them to can and they wouldn't do it well I wasn't talking about the ones who may have wanted to do it and couldn't do it I mean common sense says I'm not talking about them because they know they can't like I know they can't so they didn't take offense they already know I'm not talking to them okay they already know this they know I'm talking about the people who are able to so if you are able to reach out and help your family and your neighbors, you know, please find a way to help them. Helping some people just might be a ride to the store because they don't have transportation. I got an email from a lady who has a an extreme limited income to where she has $10 a week for food. And I wish she wouldn't mind me telling you who she is and her story because you would not believe how this woman makes $10 stretch for her and her husband. I was floored 
I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, man, $10? And they eat every day. It's a crafty woman. <laughs> That's crafty. My sister used to say, my, sisters, my sister used to tell other people about me. She said, my sister's house, you can go to her house and it look like she ain't got no food. And you can come back an hour later, it's a whole meal on the table. You be like, where all this food come from? <laughs> because I guess, um, you know, when you have a large family, you, you, you kind of learn how to, um, you kind of learn how to make that dollar stretch. You know, we, we used to have this little, um, game or something we used to play as children and the line was trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents <laughs> so that's exactly what this lady is doing and i applaud her and if you if you don't mind i would love for you to share that story because that is phenomenal to me you know when i started thinking about ten dollars i'm like okay I can see beans, I can see rice, um, I can see some of the $1 bags of uh, vegetables that you might mix in with the rice and season it up. I can see buying uh, maybe one chicken breast and cutting that up into cubes and putting a few in a dish every other day or two or you know, I was trying to figure that out in my head. I really was working that out in my mind, like $10 a week. Wow. But there are so many people on YouTube that do the same thing. You know, they might say $25 a week or something like that. But this woman said $10 for two people. I was amazed. You know, I was amazed that she did this. And I'm like, man, be like that when I grow up. <laughs> You know, but anyway, you all, I just wanted to put that out there because I was intending to open my video with that. I wanted to re remind everyone that while we are hashtag no more lines, let's remember that when we are going out to do what we got to do to handle our business, go knock on Miss Leola Doe next door or go knock on Miss Shirley Rue Doe across the street. Or go knock on Mr. Willie and Miss Betty house up the way. Go remember them and see. Do y'all want to ride to the store? I'm going such and such. Do you need anything? I'm going to go pick up some things. Is there anything I can get for you? You know, do you eat this or do you eat that? I might be able to pick up a couple of extra items. You know, remember them, y'all. Because truth be told, everybody can't just go jump up and run and grab some jars and lids. And we're going to talk about where to get your cannon jars and stuff from. Where you can get lids from and stuff like that. You know, that the cannon jars, I'm going to be honest with you. We go on a hunt for them jars, okay? We don't just show up at a store and they load it. No, we really, we do, we do like a scavenger hunt. We drive to go and find them. Yes, we do. We place orders online at Walmart. They only let you get one case of each item. But if I can order one case of each item and I pay for it, what I'm gonna do is go to the store early that morning, long before time for me to pick up my order. Because if you got them for me to pick up, maybe you already got some on the shelf. And that's how I'm able to get a few jars here and there. Yeah. So if we find, like when we get to the store and we see it's like six cases on the shelf, we've already ordered two, right? If it's six cases on the shelf, I'm probably going to pick up a couple of more. Yeah, I'm going to pick up two off the shelf and then I'm going to pay for my two and I'll leave the others for somebody else. That's what we're going to, that's what we do. That's how we handle it. The same thing with, the same thing with lids. You have to do it the same way. You got to see, you, you really have to be strategic when you're trying to find a way to get jars, lids, and bands. So yeah, I just wanted to put that reminder out there 
okay yeah i just wanted to put that reminder out there now we have we grew a nice size garden we have neighbors and i made it plain to them they come and get eggs from us they don't have to tell me i made it plain if you need eggs you know where the chicken house at <laughs> You know, now that's for them. You know, that ain't for the whole neighborhood. You know, Frizzy and Moo, where y'all going? Y'all gonna leave me? Jax, come on back. They all, he always trying to run with the big dogs. But um, they don't have to ask me. You know, in our garden, if they needed something from our garden, they can come and harvest from our garden. Yeah. Yeah, our neighbors. That's how we are with our neighbors. Mm-hmm. Husband and wife and children, we look out for one another. We have to. We neighbors. We don't have another neighbor for, I don't know, we got to, I mean, our neighbors are like way up the road. They're the closest neighbors to us. And our neighbor across the street, she's never there anymore, you know? So, but we watch her house. <laughs> we look out for her property. But our neighbors, they can come and harvest from our garden. They can come and get eggs from us, we don't mind. We don't mind. And when we process some of our chickens, yeah, we're gonna share what have they done. Like they really haven't done anything, you know, to just do that. But I feel like it's something on me. <laughs> well, I won't say it that way because if we need them for anything and they can help us, they will come help. Okay? You back, Grizzly? Hey, buddy. They will come help. They really will, you know? So that's how we have to be, you know, as neighbors. That's how we have to look out for one another, okay? Yeah, that's it. Your paw is so super heavy, Grizzly. Ow! <laughs> so that's how we have to be with one another. So each one teach one and help one another all right y'all so that's gonna do it for this video i just wanted to give that update because i forgot to mention it because once i did the video i immediately started thinking about my mom my dad my mother-in-law my aunt i have a great aunt you know but her granddaughters really look out for her so i'm not worried about her it's not she has people looking out for her she has children that look out for their mama in all the way in different states they look out for their mama so my great aunt she's the matriarch of our family in her uh mid 90s and she's she's kicking <laughs> she's going strong so yeah you all but for those who don't have anybody to look out for them look out for them okay and if you're somebody you don't have anybody around you, don't be afraid to reach out to your neighbor and ask for help, too. Sometimes I know we are a little afraid to ask for, for assistance. You know, we feel like they might not want to help us or we even feel like we don't want to be a bother to anybody. But I guess now is really the time that we have to come together. We have to have each other's backs. And we have to stick together because when you look around, you already know who you can't depend on. You already know who you can't count on and who you bet not count on. We have to really come together as a community and we have to help and look out for one another, right? We have to want for our brother and our sister for our neighbors even, our family members. We have to want for them what we want for ourselves, okay? All right, y'all, remember each one, teach one, help one another, all right? If you like the video, like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video that we upload to the channel. Thank you all so much for watching Homestead Heart. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. And I'll see you in the next video.